And the Daily Graphic this morning reports that maintain healthy lifestyle. That's the advice from the uh, Dr. Dacosta Abwaji, the leader of the risk management for the National COVID-19 response team. And it says the habit will strengthen your immune system against COVID-19, according to the Ghana Health Service. Now, Electoral Commission 2020 voters register, uh, registration exercise Movement plan phase three is in there in the daily graphic and the daily guide, so they're quite heavy. The 2020 elections about comparison of leadership and records. President Akufad has told uh, his party's communicators to focus on achievements of the government. Bui power to pay compensation from IGF. The Ghanaian Times have recovered from COVID-19. Volta Regional Minister Dr. Lecha uh, says out. And Sanitation Ministry presents five pickups to the Ghana Armed Forces to help them in the fight against um, uh, insanitary conditions. EC begins third phase of registration exercise and 10 more SHSs hit by COVID-19. Mali School, Bishop Herman, Archbishop Porter Girls, among others infected or affected. The Daily Guide, five pickups for Ghana Armed Forces to fight filth. Police chief ordered out of Yendi and 48 pages on the EC's registration plan phase uh, three. Uh, pull out there and you, if you buy a copy of the Daily Graphic or the, uh, the Daily Guide, you will find it and know where to register. The ex-NDC MP to refund 2 million Ghana cities loot from venture capital. And Chief Imam blesses Dr. Bormias running mate. The BNFT this morning says... Post-COVID-19, Renewable Energy Guarantee, Sustainable Future, IES. Also, the reverse 50% benchmark value reduction on vegetable oils. Local palm oil uh, industry cries out as the government took back what it gave them. Sanitation Ministry, Zoom Lion present five pickups to the Ghana Armed Forces. And also, the Finder newspaper this morning says, Our promise to Zongos delivered. We will do more, uh, Dr. Baumia tells um, also uh we'll tell well uh, the chief imam and the, the government adb fund 1300 subsidized outboard motors for fisher folks dr awal is also commending the um the electoral commission for the peaceful conduct of a registration exercise and disregard ndc claim of security intimidation in honuta according to the mpp benefson's own Daily Dispatch this morning. Let's go to the, the screen and uh, co connect with our guests. Beneficence on the Daily Dispatch talks about 12% of MPs that do not have first degree in education. Uh, first degree education, I beg your pardon. He's also talking about Sanitation Ministry and Zoom Lions presentation of five uh, vehicles. But interestingly, on the front page, it says 12 of our MPs, 12% of our MPs do not even have a first degree uh, and they are making uh, laws for all of us. But I've been joined via Zoom by Andrew Ejapamesa. He's a lawyer. He's got a first degree and, and more. And he represents the good people of uh, Second D constituency. Thank you very much for your time, Council. Good morning. How are you doing? Good morning. By His Grace, I'm well. You look very well. Uh, even though I'm, I'm pretty much fatigued uh, travels last night. <laughs> okay. Uh, is your TV on? Well, I'm, I guess I'm further away from the TV. Uh, but they would need to bring it down because I think it's uh, it's uh, getting in our way on on uh, the the show. So you may have to you may have to bring it on. Well, if you give me a second. Okay, sure. And uh, also, will join us on on Zoom. Will be the honourable member of Parliament for the Ningo Pram Pram constituency, Sam. Jata George, he will join us. We're discussing the topical issues this morning. Over the weekend, the I'm trending here. issues I'm here. were... I can hear you were, loud and clear. Yes. Yeah, so, Sam, welcome. Good morning. How are you doing? A very good morning to you, too. Mm. Uh, let us let me start with you, then, since Bobo will, will, will come maybe, back. Maybe you should also state that I have a first degree in law, since you did that for, for Bobo. Yes, yes, of course. But that you have hidden fairness. that. What we know is that you are an engineer. <laughs> So, <laughs> correct you. I, I, well, I guess that you have two degree, first degrees as well because I, I, I have a degree in political science. Degree. Okay, so it's a battle of Fantastic. degrees. I'm sure your colleagues in parliament. <laughs> I'm sure your colleagues in parliament who don't have who don't have either of what you have will, will be looking at you and say, "Look at these boys." <laughs> I, I, I don't think so at all. I mean, uh, to, to, to be fair, uh, there, there are various skill sets that people bring to. And so, in that regard, I guess that if you don't even have a first degree, but you have some peculiar, peculiar knowledge in some field, 
uh, you can bring it to bear in mm. shaping the national conversation. So I, I really do not think that a focus too much on higher learning mm -hmm. is what ought to be the criteria for, for qualification into parliament. I see. Except that it helps. You know, uh, it helps if, if you, you are, you are uh, able to appreciate the issues better, put them in proper perspective. And, mm. and so that, that's, that's, I guess, what a degree does for you. Uh, enables you to uh, put together sound, cogent arguments and reasoning and, mm. and all that. But, hey, that's what our constitution says. If you meet the criteria, then, then your people can uh, proceed to elect you to, to, to represent them in parliament. Okay. So how does this affect lawmaking, uh, given the fact that you would need expertise? Parliament works uh, via committees, and every committee demands a certain level of expertise. How does this affect lawmaking generally? Well, I, I, I believe that at the end of the day, expertise is acquired and expertise is learned. Expertise is not necessarily in, um, in documentation. When you take, for example, um, myself and the Honorable Ejapa Mesa, who are on your show today, he's the vice chairman of the Communication Select Committee. Right. He doesn't have a degree in telecommunications or in ICT. Neither do I. I. I'm an engineer, but my engineering was not computer engineering or telecoms engineering. However, by way of, of, of what we have done and experience that we have gathered along the years, we are both serving and discharging ourselves equitably um, on that committee and serving our country. So, yes, it's good to have um, some level of tertiary education or higher learning uh, certification. And that, that in itself helps you to it opens up your mind on a certain level, mm. but that should not be the foundation and the prerequisite. I mean, there are people who have four or five degrees and mm -hmm. may not necessarily be able to give you the kind of quality that someone who maybe just has a school certificate but mm. has got some solid work experience will bring to the table. Again, I serve on the public accounts committee. I'm, mm. I'm not an accountant. However, I don't think anybody will say that I don't discharge myself well there. So I, I believe that those who want to make... Um, a certain qualification, educational qualification, the basis mm -hmm. uh, or the ground qualification for coming into parliament have missed the point, actually. A lot of what comes into play in parliament is actually experience. Mm -hmm. I see. Okay. Uh, Bobo, let me begin with you on this particular subject. Over the weekend, uh, we've seen your national youth organizer trend in Anabwachi, and it stems from the fact that we had seen a post from him saying that he took a tour of some schools in the Ashanti region and the students express their gratitude to the president and they have told him that they will vote um, and, and give Nana four more to do more. It's come under a lot of criticism and public backlash where they say parents cannot visit their children, but here's pure politicking going on. He will subsequently write uh, a, a, a long list of uh, an epistle to, to us and tell us um, that the NDC, for example, doesn't like to read. The NDC failed to take up the opportunity granted by the GES under the hand of Cassandra Chum Ampofo to be able to go into the schools to monitor what's happening. And that is just vile propaganda. But in that statement, he failed to respond to that politicking bit of him seen in a photo addressing the students. What do you say? Is there politicking going on? I, I don't think there's politicking going on at all. I say so because I've read tax, if you like, social media, also read Anabwache's response. And I tend to take the position that he takes. That this is an elections process where political party participation is sanctioned by the electoral commission. Indeed, during my rounds over the weekend, indeed on Saturday, I tend to visit Fijai Secondary School. Mm sure many of the candidates who are participating in the election did do the same in, in, in various respects by visiting the <laughs> registration centers that have been set up in the schools and also those that are in their constituencies to apprise themselves of what it is that was happening. Indeed, I've seen videos of my brother, Sam George, uh, at a registration center engaging uh, uh, in some exchanges with uh, some security personnel. Uh, mm. He can tell us what it is that the details really are. But I'm saying that when I went to Fijai, I mm. sought uh, audience with the school authorities 
uh, introduced myself and then uh, proceeded to say hello to the students who are were seated uh, decently in a space mama <laughs> family home because you just couldn't walk in and uh, uh, engage with the electoral officers and turn around and leave and so if he then addresses the students uh, offers a word or two to them and urges them to proceed as they had indicated clearly by joining the queue uh, to participate in December and, and, and vote in a certain direction. Uh, of course, why not? You know, so, so, so uh, the, these are students who are enjoying from a certain policy that our friends on the other side criticized, bastardized, had several advertisements against its implementation, told us that there was no way that it could be done. There was no funding. You recall the interview that he said, the president granted the BBC where he mm. said that wherever he was going to find funding <laughs> from, he would rather speak to these people. The, the ridicule that our friends on the NDC side uh, uh, put across uh, for, for those comments. Indeed, we are today witnesses, witnesses of a full implementation of the free SHS, which today I hear the same people say that, well, the free SHS is not much. You've uh, contracted so much money. Uh, free HS is costing us in the region of some one, two billion. So what are you using all the rest of the money that you've contracted over the period for? Mm. And so question is, really, at the time that they were questioning the, the implementation of this policy, uh, did they know that it could be done? And okay. so <laughs> if Nabuachi goes out there and tells the students that they should uh, register to vote, and vote for Nana Kuvado so that their junior brothers, their cousins, their uh, 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 friends, uh, uh, brothers of their friends, mm. sisters, who uh, would subsequently come in, uh, uh, would enjoy the benefit of the program that they have enjoyed. I, I feel to see how anybody would condemn that. In any event... Well, 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 so before you move on to any event, uh, let, let me... Let me I, 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 I'm, I've seen... No, I've allowed, I've allowed you space to talk, but I want to ask a question from what you've said yeah, previously. Sure. Now, you said you visited Fijai Secondary School. It's jurisdictional yes. because you are the member of parliament for the area. In this yes. particular instance, Nana Bwachi is the national youth organizer of the NPP, and he chose yes. no other place than the Ashanti region to attend to. Some say jurisdiction, jurisdictionally, that's your constituency. So you were speaking yes. to your constituents. Uh, yes. Well, maybe not select, but he was saying in the picture, speaking to children in the Ashanti region. Now, parents yes. cannot visit their children, but he gets a chance to visit them. That's uh, not no, what you're saying. His capacity as the national youth organizer of the New Patriotic Party. And look, you can check whether the parties, both parties, and indeed the other parties as well, haven't nominated some of the original officers to monitor the exercises across the regions. You can check. And so I'm sure that Dana Boache has been assigned to the Ashanti region. Uh, the general secretary has been assigned. The regional chairman has had occasion to come to second day, has gone to other regions as well, I believe. Uh, the NDC officials, I'm sure, are going up and uh, uh, down the country at the national level, mm. monitoring the exercise, speaking to people. And so I fail to see how anybody would condemn the national youth organizer of the new patriotic party. Uh, in carrying out his functions as an official of a political party. Okay. Let me bring in uh, Sam. Sam, welcome. And uh, Bobo says there's nothing wrong with uh, what Nana Boachi did. In fact, I'm sure you've also seen the, the release from uh, lawyer Nana Boachi, and he's written to say that your party doesn't like to read. Number one, the question I'd ask you is, you are also seen at a registration center uh, raising some concerns. So... What, what moral right would you have to criticize what Nana Bwachi has done? <coughs> Sorry, excuse me. Let me say very good morning to you, you and uh, Honorable Japan Minister and our viewers. I think that there are, there are three issues I'm going to address. I would first and foremost address the issue of Nana Bwachi going to the school. Mm -hmm. Then the second issue will be what he did in the school. And the third issue will be to clarify the video of me circulating. The first issue of Nanabachi being able to visit the students in the school, just like myself or a Japan Mesa or any other person who visited the children in the school has become an issue 
because government is saying that it will not allow the biological parents or the guardians of the legal guardians of these children mm. to visit them over the eight to 10 week period they are spending in school. That's why that is even an issue. Mm. It's an issue because you cannot say that political activists are allowed to visit people's children in school and we do not pose a risk, a health risk to them. However, the biological parents of these children or the legal guardians of these children pose a health risk to them. <clears throat> I visited Pram Pram Senior High School okay. on Saturday. And when I got there, in fact, the previous day I had been in Go Senior High School. I didn't go there. But I decided to go to Pram Pram Senior High School to see what the processes were. Okay. When I got there, my temperature was taken. I was asked to wash my hands. And that was it. I was allowed to go in there and mingle with the EC officers and mingle with the students. Now, the question I ask myself is, if this is all the checks that are, are to be done for the political activists who are being allowed in, why are we stopping the parents of these children from visiting their children? The numbers. And that is where the, that, that is what, that is, that is what smacks of, of, of dishonesty. No, I mean, how many are these kids? If you, if you have a day, if you have a day or you can run it, even they're there for eight weeks, right. you can choose to give, do it in a scheduled manner. Okay. Where every 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 weekend you allow a hundred parents to come in, and then okay. the next weekend another set of so, some roster of a kind. It's possible, but to say some roster of a kind. If we are doing the, the the registration through cluster systems, why can't mm. we do this also in a cluster system? Okay. And when 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 political elements come in, it how many? They come in a team. They come with a whole entourage. The electoral commission is there as a whole entourage. The the the. The, the parties have agents there and entourage, the number of people who are interacting with these children. So it is the fact that when government says they won't allow parents access to their own children under the guise of a public health pandemic, but that same government thinks that it is fine for political activists to find space and expression in the same space with the same people, it, it just smacks of hypocrisy. And I think that it makes it obvious that the whole idea of these kids being in school was about political activities for government. Second issue, but, but, but how do you how do you prove that some uh, when government insists that this is not what we are doing? We just want the children to write their exam and scale on to the next grade. Johnny, Why? How Johnny, do you say that? How Johnny, do you prove I that? I don't need to prove, uh, Johnny. I don't need to prove anything. What is happening is enough proof. The proof of the the, the the pudding or the taste of the pudding is in the eating. As we speak, as any parent, even in Accra Girls Senior High School, where where children were infected and parents wanted to see their kids. Government refused them under the guise that it was a public health pandemic. Yet government has found it expedient and prudent for political activities to go on on these campuses and people come in. And you know what? You know the, the interesting thing that many people are not averting their minds to? It is not just the EC officers who are on campus who are, who are registering the children. What is actually happening is that people from outside the, in the, the, the secondary school environment are being brought into the schools because many of these children do not have the Ghana card mm. and they don't have a passport on campus. And so many of these children have to be guaranteed for. And so people in the communities that surround the school are being brought in to come and guarantee for these children. Is that, what is, is that what is happening? People in the communities. I'm telling you what's happening on the ground. And you can find out from your correspondent. Ask your correspondent who went out. But how, but, but how do the people when they are going to school? But how do how do the people in the go communities go. know uh, the sorry, students uh, in the school? Uh, uh, Johnny. Mm. That's that's another that's another issue of the validity of the vouching process. Johnny, ask yourself how many of the senior high school children, when they were going to school, how many parents will ask their senior high school children to go to school to go to school with a passport if they have one? And how many of them did have a, a Ghana card on them. In fact, what is actually mandated for the children to come to school with is their national health insurance card, not the Ghana card and not the passport. So how are these children being vouched for? That's the question you should be asking yourself. And so we are exposing these children to people they don't even know just so that they can come and guarantee for them, but we are saying their biological parents should not come. What more is, what is better proof of the fact that this is a political ex 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 exercise? Let me move to the second issue I raised. The second issue I raised is, why this has even become more topical mm. is the fact that it's a clear violation of the GES guidelines or, or regulations. Which one of them? You remember that this same government, this mm -hmm. government, this government of President Akufuado, mm -hmm. interdicted a senior high school headmaster for allowing 
the, the national organizer of the NDC to address students in a school. But there was no because electoral said, commission political... registration. So I don't see the point. Oh, oh, Johnny, 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 if you relax, politicking, politicking of any sort mm -hmm. is, is prohibited on the, on the campus of any senior high school. That's the GES regulation. And for that reason, this same government interdicted the headmistress or headmaster who allowed the national organizer of the NDC to come and address students mm. politically. Mm. What did Henry Nana Boachi go and do there? Did he not go and campaign for the NPP and say four more for Nanado? Was that not politicking? Did he only go there to monitor the exercise or he took advantage to campaign mm. politically? Would that headmaster or headmistress for that school be interdicted? What's the source for the goose the source for the Ganda? It is this political hypocrisy. It is the stinking hypocrisy of this government that we complain about. Okay, mm. four legs good, two legs bad. Because it is the national youth organizer of the NPP campaigning for the president, the GES has gone deaf and dumb and mute. Would you add, would they have accepted if this was a video of Sam George campaigning for President Mahama? Would they not have raised the issue with that headmaster? No, no, but you said they gave you an opportunity. You refuse to take it because you don't like to read. Well, well, I like to read, and the reading, and, and in reading, I've read the GES regulations, which prohibits political campaigning. The GES has not set aside these regulations. The GES has not set aside these regulations. The facts are the facts. You do not campaign on a senior high school or in any second cycle institution. The, lo the laws of our land do not allow you to, to go and campaign there. Okay. The Nabi has broken that law. So what should the happen? The issue I wanted to raise. So what should happen? Of me. Nan Nanabi has broken that law. So what should happen? We want to see similar action as was taken when uh, Joshua Kamba visited the school. The headmistress or headmaster of the head of that school must be immediately interdicted by the GES and an investigation commenced by the GES into the activities of Nanabi on that campus. Okay. Let me give you one minute to, to tell us. A stern warning letter. Okay, let me give you one minute to tell us why you were out there uh, telling people that power will switch or power will change. One minute and then we'll go to Bobo. Why were you saying that to them? They were working. Absolutely. Johnny, Johnny, Johnny. Mm -hmm. I was in Parliament on, on Friday when I got a call that busloads of people had been brought into my constituency and they were being taken through the queue by the NPP parliamentary candidate, Alex Marty. And so I rushed into the constituency because my people told me that they had actually stopped one person and, and, and they, had, they had apprehended the person and were handing the person over to the police for the person to, because the person had admitted that she had been brought in by so-called operatives from the office of the president who were working with the MPP parliamentary candidate who claims to be a presidential staffer mm. and had been brought from down to man. And so they were handing the person over to the police. This person had self-admitted this. The police was refusing to act. And so there was a military team in my constituency. I had called the military team also to alert them of this. By the time I got to the constituency, the military team was there. I got there and the police officer who was on duty, there's a police officer in the video, okay. who was on duty, who was supposed to have acted when the complaint was made to him and failed to act, but rather went ahead to say he was seizing the phone of one of my agents mm -hmm. who was recording the exercise and his refusal to act according to law. And said he will arrest my agent for, for, for videoing his inactivity or indecision decision not to act. When I got there, I told him, I said, look, he's a police officer. And I've seen this, the thing that I was threatening a military man. Not at all. The military men were actually there to ensure that the right thing was done. I was speaking to the police officer in, the, in, in question. And I said to him that if he was not going to do the right thing, he, 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 instead of apprehending the person who was flouting electoral law, mm. he was seeking to arrest the person who was exposing the wrongdoing for political expediency, power will shift. And I, I say it without any equivocation and without any apologies. Power will shift. And when power shifts, anybody who is flouting the laws of Ghana, any security officer or officer of the law who thinks that they will set aside their legal mandate and work with political partisan considerations will have questions to answer. And when power shifts, we would deal with them in accordance with the law for them to answer the questions that they have to answer. Because anybody who decides mm. to use his office, public office, for public, for personal parochial interest or for partisan considerations, which is against the oath they swore, okay. they are flouting the law. Thank and you. And when power shifts, we will hold them accountable for it. Thank you.
Uh, Bobo, let me shift to you now. Uh, you have the power in your hands at this point to the make power a response. Shifted from me to Bobo. Yes, uh, Andrew, Andrew Mesa. So, Sam has raised concerns that use the same principle you use for Joshua Kamba to, uh, to, to measure that of Nana B and let the axe fall on the headmaster or headmistress of the school where uh, Nana B was. And I'm pointing out to Sam that at the time when Joshua Kamba went to the school, the electoral commission was not conducting a registration exercise. What do you say? He says, well, the laws, the GES regulations are clear. No politicking in the school. Tony, you, you hit the nail right on the head. But of course, I mean, I'm not, I'm not one who would say that if what Nana B did uh, is, is condemnable, then because it's the MPP that's in power, it should be left off the hook. I, I saw the video clips. I don't think that what he did was untoward. But if the NDC is calling for some investigation by the Ghana Education Service to determine whether indeed their rules or regulations were flouted, uh, it's not something that they're entitled to make any call that they want. But you see, to suggest that the schools were opened purely to advance a certain political agenda is baffling. Because you see, Johnny, the Electoral Commission is conducting a nationwide registration exercise. If these students were home, that would not change their age to under 18. They will still be 18 plus and will be entitled to register wherever they were. And so if they are now in school mm. and ordinarily they would be required to register at the polling station closest to their school. Okay. But because of the COVID protocols mm -hmm. and the need for them to be kept in campus, the Ghana Education Service and the Electoral Commission have come into an agreement to move those pooling centers that the students would have ordinarily gone out there to go and register into their schools to enable them to register. The, 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 NDC, <laughs> the, NDC says that, the NDC says that some of the registration centers in the schools are not gazetted and that is an affront of the law. But number two, Johnny, number, two me, number two, number two, the Saturday, students will not be in court. school. Oh, oh, hold on, let me put that, let me lump it together so you can respond to, to it once and for all. The NDC says that some of these registration centers in the schools were not gazetted. So already the electoral commission tells them that we're using the gazetted centers and they're doing something otherwise. Number two, they are saying the but students will not be in school to vote. So it is a possibility of trying to transfer votes because you have, we don't see that in the calendar. And they say it's, a, it's an avenue for rigging because if, for example, the student comes from a shaman and attends school in Fijai and got a chance to register in Fijai, coming back to vote at Fijai or in Fijai on election day will be a tall order. So it will give the NPP and the EC a chance to wipe some of these votes in your favor. These are the two issues that they have raised. What do you say to that? unbelievable the latter part of the argument that and let me deal with the first one you see the ec hasn't created new registration centers that's not what they've done johnny if you go around you notice that even where the queues are long the ec has a mobile team that goes around to complement the registration exercise at the center now every data that they capture on that additional machine that they bring is then transmitted onto the registration center's machine before they leave. Why? It's the same thing that is happening in the schools. They are using the proximate pooling centers, registration centers, as the centers where these students are being registered. And the data that is captured there, which the NDC have agents who are taking details of every single card we are doing the same, okay? Mm. And compiling their own set of information. So to suggest that the AEC has created a new center that is not gazetted, beats my mind. It's a commonsensical response to an issue that has come up arising out of this COVID. Okay? Mm. And so to suggest that there will be some attempt at rigging, so surprising. Mm. Immediately, they forget that in 2015, when people were complaining about the activities of the Electoral Commission, then President Muhammad told us that the EC is an independent body and that 
They cannot, under any circumstances, be influenced to rig elections in favor of anybody. Immediately, they forget. What has changed? Okay? So, I think that, look, all the objections that they put up across the months, over the months, with respect to this registration exercise, mm. today, they are mounting billboards urging people to go and register. It's good. Because that is the only way that people can exercise their franchise and participate in our democratic governance. Okay. That, that it's challenges. It's still best for, for, for our purposes. I hear you. Quickly. I don't know what at his police station. Mm. Okay, but I listened to the tape. I watched it twice. And I think that the words that my brother used clearly were unfortunate. Which, which words didn't brother. you like? Oh, of course. I mean, Sam George is my brother. And I can tell him, you know, maybe in private and not on public TV. Okay. But I, I think that the words that he used clearly shows a certain, you know, uh, 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 trait of persons who clearly think that when you have power, or mm. that when they get power, they're going to use it in a certain direction. Because we are all in this country. When the Let My Vote Count Alliance demonstration took mm. place, military men, policemen were unleashed to beat innocent citizens. MPP has come to power. Where the people who were unleashed acting in the interest of a certain political party for which we were supposed to then use the power that we have to hunt them down. Is that a suggestion? There have been transfers, somebody says, to, to very, very... Transfers, transfers happen every day. Oh, okay. This is by the IGP transferring police officers across the country mm. on a regular basis. Or you haven't seen it? Well, that's... Is it the suggestion that those are politically motivated? That's what they say. So the transfers that took place during the time that the NDC was in government was politically motivated. Okay, let me go to Sam oh, response so we can take some messages. When they were in government, there were no transfers. Okay, Sam, let me give you two minutes. The conversation. It helps all of us. Okay. okay? Mm. And stop this pettiness yeah. that really we, 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 we threw at each other without any basis in fact. Okay, L let me quickly you give know, Sam two me, minutes and then we'll go for messages. Uh, yeah. Sam, respond yeah. to some of the issues. Bobo you know, says you, know, you, you are crying wolf over nothing because the agenda to rig that you suggest is neither here nor there. First and foremost, um, and let, me, let me just start with the, the last issue he raised and I'll come to this agenda to rig. Um, let's be clear. If anybody is doing the right thing, they will have no questions to answer. If you're doing the wrong thing, you would have questions to answer. And it's not true that you have not unleashed people. The law students who demonstrated, who were beating and had to seek solace in the residence and embassy of the, of the Canadian government, even in their own country, when you unleashed your invisible forces in the police service on them, are still memory. Recently, when Ghanaians came towards the, 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 the parliament house, you unleashed water cannons and spread water cannons on them and, and beat them up. So there's, there's enough evidence and ample evidence of the high-handedness of this stuff. And anybody who acts against the law and against the people of Ghana will have questions to answer when power shifts. If you have a problem with it, that's fine. But power would hold people to account when, we come, when, when, when power is given. Okay, one Second, minute more. Mm. On the issue of rigging, look, when you look at the, the EC's register, there mm. is no vote transfer. But take it from me. There is a surreptitious attempt by the EC and the NPP to bring an amendment to the CI, to Parliament, as we speak, mm -hmm. to allow for a limited transfer for SHS students. And I'm sounding the alarm here. They are going to try to get Parliament, to use their numbers in Parliament, to say that there will be a limited transfer window open for only senior high school students and not all Ghanaians. And that is against the constitution of Ghana. Mm. The constitution says that you would not use any power vested in you arbitrarily, capriciously, maliciously, and to the detriment of any group of people. Why should we allow yes, senior high school students the opportunity? Why should we allow... Bobo, allow, Bobo, allow him. The, oh, Bobo, mm. I was quiet when we were speaking. Oh. Okay. Why should we allow That's senior high school students the opportunity to do a transfer? Mm. And, we cannot, and we, cannot allow, we cannot allow other Ghanaians who by virtue of work or other instances have had to register elsewhere and want to transfer. If there's going to be a transfer window... The transfer window must be open to all of everybody. Thank you Imagine very much. Grateful. That's enough. You, you have the floor. Let's hear your messages. Can do transfer. Okay. 
The transfer window, some says, must be for all, not just for <laughs> SHS students. But what are they saying, Otto? What are they saying on WhatsApp? Yes, Walanya well, Inakwitia says, I don't see anything wrong with Nana Buache visiting schools at as national youth organizer of the ruling party to encourage and give them morale because the students are already traumatized. Yesterday was birthday. Oh, okay, I don't get it. Nana Buache addressing... Oh, what is <laughs> Okay. Nana Buache addressing students is not fair. Government uh, said nobody should visit his or her child, but you go there to campaign for your party come December 7th. Uh, from Abdul Hamid Nyangpala. Good morning, TV3. You guys are doing a great job. MPP shouldn't think they are in power, so they have the uh, superpower to do everything they like in this country. They should remember they are not going to be in power forever. My greetings to Honorable Sam George Abdul Salam Yaru from Kadezongu. Hi, Johnny. Did I hear the second MP justifying Anabuache canvassing votes for the president Olala? John Avogbedo sent that from Takrade. Positive change in Medina Accra says, which record or achievement is Ekufado asking his communicators to talk about when there is none to show apart from looting, corruption, hardship, and abuse of power? Say a big no to this deceptive government called the NPP. Regard to uh, lawyer Francis Sosu, next MP for Medina. The president has aptly challenged MPP and its communicators to remain focused in touting our huge achievements, and I think it's a right call. We have achieved so much in this short period of administration that Ghanaians ought to know rather than focusing on the incompetent past administration. Kwesi Reynolds sent that from Agunal Dabing. Good morning, Johnny, and your studio panel. Nana Buache, in my view, did not flout any rules. The registration process has to be monitored. From uh, Devgela in Tema. From John Bosco in Abokobi, NDC criticized the registration at the schools, but now they have been exposed as the registration is going on successfully. Let's stop criticizing everything government organizations do. Johnny, good morning to you and your panelists. My regards to Bobo. Uh, Nana B visits to the schools is not a, a, a bad move. Students need to reward MPP for the policies they are enjoying. It saved money into their parents' pockets. Alhaji Farouk for Yendi constituency from Mohammed Ibrahim Adibo. From teacher constitution, uh, we are Mwase. Let us all protect ourselves against COVID-19 because the virus has no respect uh, it's, no, it's no respect of persons. Please, as you go and register, make sure you observe all the safety protocols to avoid contracting the virus. Greetings to Honorable Dr. S.K. Nyama, Kwadaso MP. Good morning, Johnny. For the purposes of voters' registration, so long as there is a registration center, political parties ought to be uh, represented and the GES acknowledge that fact. So why is everybody talking about Nana B? Or we just want to pretend that we've not seen pictures of the NDC as well. Agbo uh, Nelson uh, Kobla in Akachi. Let me take the very last one. Kojo Theo from Midye. Johnny, Mr. Uh, Mesa looks uh, better on virtual than coming to the studios. We don't want to see him at your studio. <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> <laughs> that way for the messages this Thank morning. Thank you, Etinam. Uh, Sam, so uh, 10 more schools, we understand, have recorded cases of COVID-19. And I was just doing an analysis this morning of what the 20, uh, 14, the 21-day rule of the WHO is. That if the children went to school in, uh, on the 22nd of June, and as of the 9th or 10th of July, they recorded the cases. The possibility that they picked it off campus is very, very high. I don't know what you think, but does it still make sense to keep the children in school at this time, looking at the number of cases that are being recorded? Or you still think like the PR of the Ministry of Education that it's still a drop in the ocean, considering that we have more than 700 secondary schools? Johnny, this government is your typical NTO by OBI government. They don't listen to nobody. They don't listen to advice. They don't listen to sound voice. Of, of reasoning, they listen to nothing. I mean, when they've made up their mind they're going to do something, that's all they do. And, and you can see it, it makes no sense. The medical advice, the medical professionals are saying it makes no sense to keep these kids in school. They've warned that they're going to see, we're going to see infections. Like you said, if you look at the 14 day window for infection, it's clear that all of these children who are showing infections now got infected when they came to school. They were not infected before they came to school. 
You understand me? And, mm. and we're exposing people's children to, to, to this risk and this pandemic simply because of political considerations. No, let's not forget, the NPP has not hidden the fact that they were going to, they were hoping to get 2.4 million votes from free SHS graduates. Mm. The NPP doesn't think that the larger Ghanaian population will vote for them. They hope that they can hoodwink this first time voters into voting for them. And that's why their focus is on this, on, on these children. Look, the bottom line here is this. These children are innocent. If this government had any milk of human compassion running through their veins, if they had any compassion as parents, if they felt anything, any human empathy, they would stop putting these kids through this. I mean, kids who are afraid of contracting COVID, how do you think they, are, they have the frame of mind to even write an exam? Nigeria has canceled the exam. Kenya has canceled exams. Sensible governments, governments that think and are worried and concerned about their citizens. But, but Sam, that's too that's too harsh to say. Exam. That's too harsh to say. Sensible governments. What? Well, that, that's too harsh. You may have to uh, look. No, the, the look for a synonym. Look for a synonym. A sensible government. Look for a synonym. No, 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 uh, Johnny, Johnny. I have not said anything about a government that doesn't cancel. I have not described them. I am describing governments that have taken a decision. I'm not, I'm, I've not chosen, I've chosen not to describe those. But, but you are comparing the two. You are comparing the two. So it's rest. You can't. You are comparing the two. It's rest in no, I'm not doing a comparison. Johnny, for me, I think that it's a sensible governance mm. for any government in the face of a pandemic not to open its schools. And some governments have been sensible. In taking that decision, example okay. the Kenyan government, Andy. example the Nigerian government. Uh, Andrew, is it does it make yeah. sense to still keep the students in school? Vincent last week on the show with uh, Sam said just one or two schools is a drop in the ocean if you look at the large number of secondary schools we have. But we have seen that ten more schools have recorded cases. Does it still make sense to you to keep the children in school? Johnny, I I I would not go the line of good friend see, there are more than 50 countries on the African continent. There are indeed more than 180 countries in the world. Every country has issues with COVID-19. So to suggest that two countries in Africa have elected to terminate their school year and uh, 48 who are proceeding are all senseless, and the two are the only sensible governments. No, 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 Johnny, that's that's not that's not that's not the case. It is not true that forty eight are proceeding. I beg you, Bobo, let's be factual. It's not true that forty eight are proceeding. There are several other countries. Rwanda has cancelled. I gave two examples. Rwanda has cancelled. South Africa has cancelled. Mm. So let's not say the other forty eight are proceeding. That's not correct. Okay, thank you, thank you for your interjection, uh, Bobo. The, you have the floor. Mm. And that. Everybody else is senseless. I will leave it for the good people of this country to decide. But you see, I have always deferred to the science and the data. Of course, if we all <laughs> because I don't have any expertise whatsoever mm. in medical epidemiology science. And, and medical science for that matter. All I know is from little law. And so if the experts, and indeed, you see, His Excellency, the President has an advisory team that includes the former Deputy Director General of the World Health Organization. And the argument that the schools were opened purely for politics, I have said earlier that as far as I'm concerned, it's an extremely shambolic one because the children, if they were at home, We'll still register. But you are getting, you're recording cases oh, in the oh, schools. Oh, see, oh, I'm coming. I'm hold on. We, we don't have no, too Johnny, much time. Please, so please, let me situate please, that. Yes, but let me discount the argument that you put across. I think that you I have do. responded to that already. I haven't responded sufficiently because, look, listen. See, please. These children, if they were home, would still register. Now, he has just before we went for the messages, mm. introduced a new angle suggesting that Ghana Education Service or the Electoral Commission is seeking to introduce some amendment to the CI that allows for a limited transfer 
Right. Of the same kids who they argue were brought to school for purposes of registration to now be allowed to go back home and transfer their votes back home to go and register. Is, home. is it true? How does that work? Is it true? I'm asking you, where is the logic in that argument? Uh, no, have you seen the document? I haven't seen it, but I'm saying that if we go by his argument that these kids were brought to school purely for purposes of getting them to register for political gain, and that the same EC and government who, according to him, are acting together, are seeking to send these kids back home to go and vote at home. How is the logic? Okay, but but now respond to my question. Respond to my question. I'm saying that I leave it entirely in the hands of the experts, the Ghana Education Service, the Ghana Health Service, mm. and the and Ghana the Ghana Medical Health Association. Let, let me, are the Sam, I'll come to you. Sam, shut down the country. Sam, I'll come to you. Uh, and, on, Andrew, Andrew, See, Andrew, yes, Andrew, allow me. We don't have too much time, so allow me to allow me to ask a question, and then you respond. Now, Andrew, Andrew, Ghana Medical Association. Yes. Now the the Ghana Health Service wrote a yes. joint uh, uh, release with the Ghana Education Service. Prior to that, the president, in announcing uh, what do you call it, that for the students to go back to school, had indicated protocols that had been set in motion. As we speak now. For two days, the, the children at the Kumasi uh, KNUST SHS were seen demonstrating in mass, in, in, in mass. We have not seen any single test being done there. I'm, I may be wrong, but as, as, I'm as far as I'm concerned, last week when we spoke with the PR of the Ministry of Education, he said they were waiting for a report of an investigation that led to the interdiction of the headmistress. So on that score, you can agree that there has not been testing. Cases have been recorded. Ten more schools. I'm asking you as a parent and as a member of parliament, does it still make sense to keep the children in school? I know you want to defer to the health experts, but does it make sense? Absolutely. Because, you see, Johnny, I say so because now, we all know that COVID is here with us. Now, if we agree that we should shut down the entire country and everybody stays home. That would be a decision that we would have all taken as a people. But if we all agree that, yes, in spite of COVID, life still has to go on, and that the enforcement of the protocols ought to be what it is that will protect all of us, then I would expect that people who are criticizing schools are open would rather be calling on the Ghana Health Service and the Ghana Education Service to ensure that the school authorities implement the protocols in the manner that would ensure the children are protected. In any event, if you say that testing has not been done, we all know the testing protocols that is being applied in this country. We are not doing mass testing. It is only when people exhibit symptoms that they then are proceeded to. We, we don't do mass testing because people were not demonstrating. These children were seen demonstrating without face masks, talking into their faces. And we keep insisting that the schools are a safer place. That situation I saw for two days was not safe. But Johnny, like I said, you cited instance from one school. Mm. I'm saying that is it the generality of situation across the schools that students are demonstrate, demonstrating? So test the children at KNUST SHS. No, I don't have a problem. But if they haven't exhibited symptoms, do they proceed to test them? Is that the regime that we are applying in this Some country? people are asymptomatic. No, people have advocated for some rapid testing to be done. The Noguchi uh, 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 officials have heard them say that they have issues with the sensitivity with the RDTs. However, that because there are some advances in that regard, they are prepared to consider some level of rapid diagnostic testing in our COVID testing regime. Boundaries. But I'm saying that in all of this, let's try and take the politicking out and discuss the issues dispassionately. Is it the case that we all should put in some concerted effort to get the school authorities to enforce the protocols in a manner that will keep our children safe, but that will keep playing politics and say that the government is senseless in keeping children in school? Okay. Which way do we want to go? Okay. I have a lot of sympathy for anybody that does not abide by the protocols 
mm. and accordingly then exposes all of us to risk of contracting the virus. Okay. So when I go to my constituency and people come to my home and they are not wearing masks, I insist because by not wearing the mask, they expose themselves and also the other people who have come to my house with their issues from, for, for, for contracting the virus. Okay. So it is an effort that we all should put our views and our, our, our efforts behind to ensure that the protocols are adhered to. Because it is only in that uh, 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 regard that we can protect our collective uh, uh, health. But I if see. we want to cherry pick and mm. because we want to play politics, condemn government insensitive, it's not sympathetic. Bobo, let me let me ask you a final for your final thought. Let yes. me ask you for a final I, thought. I, I think that we, are, we are losing the plot. Let me ask you for a final thought. Now, EC officials whose status we do not know have been in the schools. Party functionaries whose status we do not know have been in the schools. Party agents whose status we do not know have been in the schools. Should the parents be allowed to go and visit their children at least? Well, I don't think that parents should be allowed to visit their schools at this time. Of course, if the Ghana Education Service in their continuous engagement, in any event, Johnny, bear in mind that before the schools were open, there were engagements between all stakeholders, including parent-teacher associations. And the guidelines were spelled out clearly. There was some consensus before the schools opened. Now, Sam George attested to he being, uh, 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 his temperature being taken when he went mm. to the administration center. The same was done for me. And I believe that the EC officials as well before the process started. Okay. We all know that if, yes, I agree that the, the, the talk is that some people are asymptomatic. And so they are unable to manifest the symptoms. But by and large, if any of the officials who then visited the schools exhibit some symptoms, then the appropriate contract tracing me mechanisms okay. will have to be tracked. Thank you. Sure that uh, who came into Sam, you have the final word. What, what do you leave us with? Bobo says the parents should not be allowed to visit. Uh, most of them are uh, not showing symptoms. So mass testing, uh, even though I, 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 I think that we should be looking at the KN, USDSHS, for example, as a special case. But what do you say in closing? Bobo's argument doesn't follow in logic. I mean, and I know Bobo is a friend, is a brother. I know Bobo's level of logical reasoning. This is political reasoning. Bobo says he wants to follow the science. I'm sure he's following the science from his first degree, political science, not medical science. Because I medical defer, science... I defer the, to the science and the data, those who are knowledgeable. And, and I'm saying that okay. the science, the science that we need to listen to here is not political science. Okay. It's medical science. The Ghana Medical Association, who are the experts, are asking us not to do what we are doing. When we were on the air with uh, the PRO last week mm -hmm. for myself and the PRO for the Ministry of Education. Right. He said that government had given three N95 masks to every student. It's not true. They've given cloth mask, regular fabric mask to the students. And so we are not really following the science. We're exposing the children. And like I asked Vicente Sefoa, let me ask my brother Bobo. And my kids go to the same school as Bobo, Bobo's kids. We, our kids are at home. Myself and him, our kids are home. They are doing virtual yeah, learning. Oh, Would he, if he had a kid, if he had a kid, if he had a kid in senior high school, would he have allowed his kid go to any of those schools now? Without a doubt, that's a question we should ask. Okay. Yes. That's Thank you. We should ask. <laughs> if my, if my, if my, yeah, anyway, I, I like, I like the shorts. I like the shorts that Bobo is wearing. I like the shorts he's wearing. I'll come and borrow it. <laughs> Thank you very much. We didn't see that. That's Sam um, Jata George. He's the member of parliament for the good people of Ningo Pram Pram constituency. And also lawyer Andrew Japamesa is representing this morning the good people of the uh, second day constituency. Uh, second day, that's what they, they call the constituency. So that's Bobo. There, uh, I'm trying to get Bobo in your shot, but it's not appearing. But thank you very much indeed for watching. Let's